Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, your unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Later in the programme, we investigate one of the hottest topics in climate change. Can you work out who is emitting what and where? And can you spot the difference between natural and man-made CO2? We're at a mountaintop observatory to investigate. But first, the latest climate data for October from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. It has been a year of records so far, and last month it was, by a very small margin, the warmest October on record, with temperatures 1.3 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial average. It was warmer and it was also wetter across southern Ireland, the UK, France, Benelux, Germany, the Baltics, up into Russia. There was higher rainfall than the 1981 to 2010 average. That wasn't the case across the Mediterranean region, also in the Black Sea area and Eastern Europe where there was lower than average rainfall. Now, outside Europe, you'll know that Typhoon Hagibis hit Japan hard in the month of October, meaning heavy rainfall, which you can see in this dark blue area here, showing that rainfall was two and a half times higher than the average for the same period in that time of year. Coming up, a unique insight into one of the trickiest aspects of CO2 monitoring. But first, a quick reminder. The rise in global temperatures that we have been reporting in this program is due to rising CO2 levels in the atmosphere, trapping more heat, what's known as the greenhouse gas effect. And if you have a look at this graph of global CO2 levels and how they've risen from 2003 all the way to 2018, and you'll see these curves, and those are due to seasonal cycles. In fact, carbon dioxide goes up and down according to how nature is reacting, which raises the question, of really how do we measure CO2 in the atmosphere and can we tell the difference between CO2 from plants and trees and CO2 made by man? Well, I went to one of the few observatories observing CO2 in Europe to investigate. Up in the mist is the Puy de Dome Observatory in central France, where CO2 emissions from energy, transport and industry, as well as CO2 from nature, is monitored every second of the day. Scientist Michel Ramonet studies the data. Where are we now in terms of CO2 in the atmosphere? So we have concentrations of 415 parts per million, keeping in mind that we talk about pre-industrial levels of 280 parts per million, and we have a rise of about two to three parts per million per year. Humans are responsible for that rise, emitting over 36 gigatons of CO2 last year, with half of those emissions then absorbed by plants, trees and the oceans. Carbon dioxide mixes quickly into the atmosphere, so it's a huge challenge to know which emissions come from where. We measure all CO2, and we'd love to be able to give CO2 colours, to have green CO2 for vegetation and black for when it comes from cars, but we don't have an easy tool to do that. The scientists believe they have an answer, using other gases and isotopes to link CO2 in the atmosphere to human activity. They're also determined to gather more data, either from new satellites or new monitoring stations, to really understand what's happening. There are areas in the world where there are almost no measurements, in Africa, the Amazon, Siberia, and these are key regions for understanding the global carbon cycle and interactions with the ecosystems on land, in particular be it the Amazonian forest, the tropical forest in Africa. So we're desperately lacking in situ measurements. Those measurements matter for several reasons. The amount of CO2 absorbed by nature could change because of phenomena like heat waves. And countries need to know how effective their emissions reduction policies are, even if the impact on our climate won't be felt for decades. The actions of today will only have an effect in 30 or 50 years, hence the difficulty today in motivating society to take action now. You can read more about the complex interplay between natural cycles and human emissions of CO2 and see all of the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.